In this video, we're talking about people who are coming out of Mormonism or some other faith tradition and trying to find their way into a biblical expression of faith. A big part of that is choosing a church. And it can be really confusing with all the different denominations, all the different names, and there's so many churches out there. And we sometimes we're asking, where do I start? And so we're going to talk about that today. First of all, we want you to consider why choose a church? Why is it important for you to connect with a church body on your uh, journey toward faith? So uh, let's talk about that for a minute. Give us uh, some reasons why a person really ought to consider choosing a church rather than just going it alone? Yeah, I think that's a great question because more and more people are really wondering that. And we actually understand that, well, the first reason uh, is that commitment helps us grow. Okay. And we kind of intuitively understand this. I was thinking about, I like riding my bike. I know you are a cyclist as well. Sometimes it's really hard to get up in the morning yeah. and ride if it's just me. Right. But if I've planned an event with other people, it's way more. Uh, it's way easier to to go out and ride. And, and we understand mm -hmm. yeah, that. Yeah, that makes sense. And it actually works the same way in the church. That uh, it's hard to grow spiritually uh, without other people there, both holding us accountable, uh, helping mm -hmm. point things out in our life that maybe we can't see. Something like coaching. Mm -hmm. A coach is really helpful because they get an outside perspective. Right. Uh, again, we understand that intuitively, but it works the same way spiritually. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, you both get the accountability, the perspective, the community, mm -hmm. and actually without all of those ingredients, I think our spiritual growth will be stunted because God has given us means. In Ephesians 4, uh, Paul writes, one of the main ways we grow up into the fullness of the body of Christ is through speaking the truth in love. Okay to one another. Okay, and, yeah. And and there's a couple things in there. That one means love. You can't have love without commitment without relationships. relationships. Right. right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you've got that. And that's actually how you can speak the truth without it uh, just offending somebody. Right. right? Because, because you built a relationship. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, excellent. Excellent. So, so mm -hmm. uh, the the second reason uh, I would say for why choose a church is because you have something to offer. Uh, again, some of the part of the beauty of the church is that God just doesn't give a few people gifts mm -hmm. for the blessing of the church, but actually He says He's gifted everybody okay. mm -hmm. uh, through the Holy Spirit for the building up of the body. And so, what right. that means is, if you don't choose a church, you you both uh, you hurt yourself and your own spiritual right. growth, but you actually mm -hmm. hurt other people because you're not able to use those gifts that God has given you for the blessing and building up of others. Right, and all this potential that God has put in me is just going to waste then if it's not brought into this community. Exactly. You know? mm -hmm. exactly. Okay, good. So, um, you know, so you said God has uh, put these gifts in us, not just for our own benefit, but to benefit the church. So that makes me think, you know, what is God's attitude toward the church? I know sometimes we could have a negative attitude toward yep. church. What's God's view of that? Yeah, well, one of the things the New Testament's very clear on is how much God loves the church. Mm -hmm. In fact, going uh, Ephesians 4.25, uh, that, that God loved the church so much. Christ loved the church so much that He even died for it. Okay. And so what that means is then if we say we love God, a natural extension of that is we will love the church. Right, because we'll love what God loves. I exactly. Yeah. Uh, m my uh, oldest daughter um, loves bike riding. And partly that's because I love riding my bike. And every time I go for a bike ride, she asks, oh, how far did you go? And, and just two weeks ago, uh, her goal was to ride this five-mile loop around the lake while she was still five years old. And, <laughs> and she did it. Wow, okay. And, and she loved it. <laughs> Partly, I haven't forced that upon her, but right. it rubbed off on her. Right. And, and it's the same. The more we love God, the love for the church will rub off on us. That's a great way to put it. So, so there's some reasons why I choose a church. Uh, because God loves the church. Because we have something to offer. Uh, because it, it helps us grow the commitment to other people. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. else? Yeah. The, the last reason uh, is that the church is a picture of heaven. You know, that's interesting. So please explain what that yeah. is. Because, uh, you know, the church I go to doesn't always look like heaven. Right? <laughs> well, yeah. exactly. I think an important point in there is actually 
a lot of people have been hurt by the church. Yes. And and it's easy to discount the church. And and one thing I would always remind people of is, guess what? God knows what it's like to be hurt by the church. The church is simply the collection of his people. Mm -hmm. And why did he die? Well, ultimately, it was not because of his own faults, but the sin of his people right. that led him to the cross. So so God knows what it means to even be killed yeah. <laughs> by the church. By the, yeah. And yet, he never stops to love it. And so the, the church then is a picture of heaven. One of the most amazing passages on this is in Hebrews chapter 12. Mm -hmm. So if you read through that passage, it uses these words and these descriptions of heaven that we see in Revelation, mm -hmm. right. uh, like Revelation 7 and elsewhere, of the people being gathered around the throne of Christ and, and worshiping. Right. But right. what is so striking about that passage is the author actually is describing those that as a present thing that happens when God's people mm. gather together, which okay. the gathering mm -hmm. is just simply the church. Right. And so here's what that means for us, that when we gather as a church physically, you, know, you may be worshiping up in Ogden, I'm worshiping down in South Jordan, there's mm -hmm. people worshiping in Africa. Right. Physically we're right. separate, but because we are uni united by God's spirit, we actually spiritually are before the throne of God, right. worshiping together mm -hmm. in anticipation of when we will then physically be there. Yeah. And so in one sense, the church is the closest to heaven. Our worship is the closest to heaven we can get on this earth because it anticipates that. Yeah. And we even taste yeah. it spiritually and then we long for it when it comes physically. Yeah, that's really a profound idea. This shows the church is really part of something great or something bigger, and we'll talk about that in some, in, in some other sessions. But listen, I want to encourage you today because uh, it's really important for you to find a church home. We'll explore that some more in the next uh, settings. But uh, the, uh, these ideas are taken from a uh, little book that Pastor John has written, and we'll put a link to that below, and also to some questions. We encourage you to talk this over with uh, your spouse or with your friends as, as you process the ideas here that God would really use them in your life to bless you and encourage you. Thanks for watching today.